and it was pretty terrible earlier actually but the staff came out <laughs> we seem to have somebody behind me <laughs> give us a wave do you want me to put it on i'll just make sure you're in uh, give us a wave <laughs> Are you laughing your head off? Well, I think this uh, epoxy insulation we uh, uh, have put up is uh, working because we've actually got ice crystals on the inside of the boat. Whereabouts? Um, just on the window. Basically where the um, this insulation was, um, we've actually got ice crystals, whereas the ones that um, don't have this foam, they're fine. But... It just shows you just how cold it is at the moment, uh, you know. But anyway, we are cold, but we're not cold because we've got the Ebo going, um, and um, obviously we're using uh, diesel um, as our fuel, and then we've got electric as well, uh, just to keep the boat. Well, no, that that hatch that has that insulation on it. Yeah, I'll just point out. We have another one. Oh, <laughs> I bet you've got many ice cubes on there as well. Well, I don't know, because that's in the main cabin where most of the heat is. Let's go see. Oh, it looks more like water here. Just damp, because it's so cold up there. Yeah, just damp. Now, this is, um, this is water, this one. Right, well, we'll get that cleaned up. We'll have to, because... Uh, Oh. Come on, Mrs. Mops, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's why um, Beverly um, has been in sorting out uh, dehumidifiers on all the people's boats because you just produce so much water at this time of year. Basically, any metal fitting which comes through the skin of the boat because that frames on the outside. And the inside. Yeah, it's um, although because we've put the windows in um, and uh, the leaks have gone, but we're still having uh, condensation problems because it's an aluminium frame. And uh, basically, the aluminium frame condenses any water that you have in the boat. Um, we do have these. Um, these on salty lass, whereas other other boats have dehumidifiers. So, but we have the heating on all the time. We do. We have the heating on all the time because we we like to be warm. Damn right. Um, but even being warm, it's not enough for these temperatures because we're getting what zero degrees easy. It was minus two all day. It's projected to be colder than that tonight. Yeah. Exactly. So today we've got to get the diesel cans out from under the V-berth because um, the diesel's getting a bit lower. The temperatures are getting lower in around here. My mum's house, which is a few miles inland, it was minus seven there last night. We didn't quite get that bad, but we were certainly sub-zero. And the V-berth being what it is, being V-shaped with water underneath and cool sides, um, it's the coldest part of the boat. So all the surfaces in there get colder than anywhere else. All the heating systems in this boat are behind me at the back. Um, so the boat is warmest at the back and gets progressively colder as you go forward. Um, the upshot of that is that moisture will condense out on any surface in the V-berth if it gets half a chance to do so. And there's, you can do things to keep the moisture down, but you won't get rid of all of it. So you've seen us in the past use dry mat, which is like a special double layer plastic which keeps the mattress off the woodwork. And as you can see in this shot, the woodwork has some damp on it. And you can see the little patterns that the dry mat have left. And I can push it around my finger like this and mop it up with a sponge. 
but as you can also see the mattress is completely dry on the bottom so the dry mat is doing its job and stopping the mattress getting sopping wet and covered in mold and all sorts of nasties now if you do use dry mat don't make the mistake i made the first time i put it in i fitted it absolutely perfectly to the flat area of the v berth and up to the side walls and what happened was the sides of the mattress got damp because they touched the outer walls they got slightly chilled it's a formed a moisture trap and moisture formed in it so i then bought the extensions and i've since extended the uh, dry mat up so it's now level with the top of the mattress so the mattress is now protected on all the sides and the bottom and uh, that works and our mattress doesn't get moldy and it stays nice and dry and things like that um it's not a cool place if you're not careful with it so if you get the chance to stick an electric blanket in i'd do that but um Right now we've got to go in there and take everything out that's sitting on top of the diesel cans because the convenient space to store them is of course at the bottom um, under the uh, spine of the boat and they just fit in perfectly in there but it means they've got an anchor, some uh, anchor road, a couple of spare sails, a few shelves and things like that on top of them so it's time to go digging for treasure. <laughs> Gainer Meerkat. <laughs> yeah, well, once we've got the diesel cans out, um, there's usually a little bit of water right down at the bottom of the boat, um, and um, it's time for the um, stamp it's not, it's not sponge. For, it's not enough for a bilge pump. No, it's not. Um, if we've got a lot of water, we usually tend to use our dinghy pump, but it's not enough for that. But, you know, if you've got water in the boat, get it out. Um, because it just collects because of condensation, you know. Well, I've cleaned the um, bottom of the V berth and um, all this water has come out. I thought you said there's only a bit. That's like that's like half half the Irish seas in there. It didn't feel like it was much, but by the time you actually got down to it, it was a bit more than I thought. So, but the thing is, it's off the boat now, and that's, and that's that, where that, you want it. That wasn't deep enough to go through the limber holes. Um, our boat um, doesn't have the limber holes. They're quite high up um, at the Viber for various reasons, um, just the way it is. We'll also need to check um, the bilges here because uh, they collect moisture when it gets very cold. It does. Well, I can I can get on that because at the end of the day, I've got a bucket and I've got my sponge, so I could do that now. Well, we can do it some other day and go get the diesel. All right, we'll do that some other day and do the diesel. But I've got my preferences. <laughs> yeah, preferences. So what are you doing, Bev? Oh, <laughs> you. <laughs> um, putting water in the boat. Um, so how often do we have to put water in the boat, Bev? Every few days, because we don't particularly look after it when we're in port. While we're in port, we just tend to use the water quite freely because the tap's just there. So we can have as much water as we want and we just use it. When we're out at sea, we'll get a tank like this to last for a week, maybe a week and a half. In here, we get about three days. <laughs> um, but we also add half of a water purifier tablet and I've had people say why do you purify the tablets when you're in the UK the water's good um, yeah the water is good from the reservoir but then it's got to come around the marine network and sometimes it sits in hoses for a bit or in pipes under the pontoon uh, when I turned this on it was a bit greeny brownie came out for about the first three four seconds it's just not good stuff so rather than take a chance I just put one of these in uh, you can use the slight chlorine residue taste and after a while if you don't have it your water tastes funny so you soon get used to it um, so it's just a case now of just leaving it in when the tank's full, that's it. We're not using the front tank at the minute because we've got so much junk in the back berth I can't actually get to the diverter valve to switch to the front tank so the stuff in the front tank's probably got a whole civilization started up in there it's probably gone bright green. Um, 
So when we do get to the diverter valve, we'll probably just drain the entire tank, put a whole one of these in, let it sit for a while, then drain it again, and then start using it. But, you know, it's just one of the many tasks. So I've just got to go and check the water levels, otherwise I'll fill it up too far. <sighs> Okay, Beverly, so we're at a serviced pontoon. So what do we get at a serviced pontoon? Rescue equipment. <laughs> Not everybody gets one of those, Bev, but trust you. I find it significant they park us next to. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's significant too. We've got our electric with our galvanic isolator. We've got our water tap. And so you get electric and water. That's basically what you get. And a pontoon to tie up to, of course. Yeah. In our case. Yeah, so basically, um, if you haven't got a service pontoon, um, the uh, electrical stuff is fine. Do we need to put any electric in? It's saying top up, so that's probably a hint. <laughs> uh, I think there's about 20 pence left on the electric. Uh, since we go through about 140 a day, 20 pence is a seventh of a day, so we've got probably about three hours of electric left. So Beverly reckons that the cost of being here is um, 20 pence per hour? No, uh, about pound fifty a day is what we're generally going through. So, okay. So Beverly reckons that it costs us about pound fifty per day um, on electric that we're going through here. Um, but uh, other marinas, we have found it uh, more expensive. Um, the reason it's cheaper at Carrick is because we're actually on a commercial rate. Or so we've been told. Or so we've been told. We're certainly finding it a lot cheaper. It's about six pence an hour. Yeah, six pence an hour, which is not bad really. But I don't know if we should be putting this on the blog in case they put the rates up. <laughs> okay, so the number one cost is shock horror the size of your boat. Um, living in a marina, um, size matters because they um, wet measure from the stern to the front of your, of your boat. So the longer your boat, the more expensive it is. Um, and in some marinas, uh, they also take into account how wide your boat is, which is why catamarans sometimes find that they are paying a little bit more money um, for the same length. I think they pay quite a lot of more money. And to be honest, it's not really unreasonable because they take two berths. Uh, always ask for deals. I always ask for deals. Now, here at Carrick, uh, the deal is that you get a month free berthing. But there are other deals, other places. Even when you're going to a marina for a week, you can usually find a, a weekly deal or something like that. But always ask. When does this place give you a month free birthday? When we got a year's contract. We got a year's contract. Oh, I see. But that's only on your first contract with them. It was the first contract uh, and we got a month free as our first contract. That was the deal that we managed to get. Um, whereas when we were at Bangor, we got what's called a winter deal, which is where the birthing was half rate for the winter. So there are deals to be had, but just ask and see what you can get. But like I say, here at Carrick, it was a month free, but you needed to pay for 11, you know, 12 months, basically, um, which is what we decided to do, didn't we, Bev? Because we did arrive in March. Yeah, we arrived in March. And got and we, a contract starting in April. And we got the contract starting in April. We basically made the calculations that um, if it was, because we were going to do all of winter plus two months, and it would be cheaper to do a monthly contract. But if it went into three months, it was cheaper to get the whole year. And we just didn't know what was going to happen. So I think realistically, we did the best we could. Uh, and which is why we went for the year contract. One, two, three. Oh, ah, well, <laughs> it's a freezing cold night in Carrick and um, it's a lovely night, don't get me wrong. I don't know if you can see over my shoulder or not. I don't know how much of that you can make out, um, but it's a frosty one. So part of the joy of boat life is 
having to take a shower on a really frosty day. Now I have no complaints about the shower block here at Carrick. It's a lovely shower block and it's well heated and you can have all the hot water you can use. It's fantastic. The problem is coming back along these pontoons afterwards because they're covered in salt, they're icy and um, it's cold. It's a long walk and it's cold. <laughs> Well, that's that done. <laughs> Probably doesn't look too different on camera, but that's because I'm well wrapped up because it is cold. <laughs> so, uh, pontoons are very icy. I'm, I'm walking on salt at the minute because without the salt, they are lethally slippy. And it was pretty terrible earlier, actually, but the staff came out. We seem to have somebody behind me. <laughs> Give us a wave. Do you want me to put it on? Yes. I'll just make sure you're in. Okay, uh, give us a wave. <laughs> well, there goes the end of the piece to camera. I was going to talk about heating, but these things happen. So it's back up here again. <laughs> I dread to think what this week's episode is going to look like. <laughs> Right, well, after that little hiatus, we're, we're back on track again. So I was talking about heating costs and keeping the boat warm. And uh, the electricity here is quite inexpensive compared to some marinas we've been on. So it makes sense to use a little fan heater to keep the boat warm. And that's basically what we do. Um, in the daytime, when the temperatures rise a bit, the fan heater is more than sufficient and it's very, very cost effective to run. Um, 10 pounds of electric will last us maybe up a week and a half, two weeks. So that's not too bad. And that's everything. That's kettles, that's computers, all sorts of things. So that's good. But when the temperature drops at night, when it gets really, really cold, that's when we put the Eberspacker, the diesel heater on. Now that burns diesel, which costs money. And on a really, really cold night, we might get through two pounds of diesel. So it's more expensive to run than the fan heater. It's also got the other disadvantage that once you've run it for 2,000 hours, you have to service it. And the service is not expensive. If you send it away, it's 150 quid. If you get the service kit, it's 20 quid. So we service it ourselves. It's a dirty, messy job. We don't particularly enjoy it, but we can do it. So that's just something we get on with. Ah, <sighs> So costs very wildly. Um, and these cold weather sort of conditions that we have today. We run the fan heater in day about nine or ten o'clock at night when the temperatures plummet we turn the ebber on and we let it do all the heating. But uh, ooh, <laughs> it's getting chilly already and I can feel it. <laughs> and um, it's just one of those things. So it's great to have the warm showers up in the marina and uh, the walk back though isn't quite so much fun. <laughs> you do feel it because you're still slightly damp from the shower. But that's just the way it is. It's the joys of boat life. <laughs>